first thing we want to do is we want to make up some geometry so I'm going to create a quick mock-up head and then as soon as I've done that I'm going to use a plane geometry and I'm going to shrink this down this is going to be the first part of a succession of extrudes to make a hair strip so I'm just going to place this and select the edges and use the fast extrude with the control key and then I'm going to duplicate this strip once I've added enough segments in there to smooth it out a little bit so I'm using the control key to um, duplicate this strip and then I'm going to add this to a subdivisional surface tag and then make it editable just as so we can smooth out the mesh strips This thing is I'm going to select all three mesh strips in this particular case and then I'm going to go to add hair from mesh strips. You notice that there's not enough points in there. We can adjust all of this. So all of these settings are global settings for all of the hair strips and we've got some settings like how many hairs per strip and sometimes I'll have 1000 or 2000 hairs per strip then we've got the distribution type this is how it's going to distribute the hairs across there and then of course we've got the points per strand which is going to smooth out the strand within the hair strips tab we've got the individual strips of hair geometry and for these individual strips of hair geometry we've got the option to adjust some parameters on a per strip basis. For example we can adjust how many hairs that we have on a per strip basis and its distribution type per strip. We can also hide the mesh strips by clicking the hide mesh strip. This means the geometry is no longer visible. There's also options to make sure that the strips are going in the right direction. You notice that you've got these red arrows going through the middle of the mesh strips with an arrow indicating the direction in which it's pointing. We have the option to rotate different orientations of each mesh strip so that it aligns correctly. For instance, I've just rotated it once and you can see that the hairs are actually going across the horizontal. We have various options here. If we select from the directions menu, you can see that we've got various options to control the flow in the direction of the hairs. By manipulating the geometry, you're able to direct the hairs into a different style. In this particular case, I'm using the sculpting brushes. If you were to add a edit guides operator you'll find that the hair turns red and this indicates that you're able to directly groom the hair itself. This gives you very fine control over the grooming process. Note that this is not the same as grooming the guides which normally guide the hair. 
For this reason, you may want to use the different selection methods to isolate the particular group of strands, i.e. hairs, and then manipulate that so that the grooming brush is only going to be affecting the actual selection. You may find while grooming that it tugs the hair out of the roots, in which case you can choose an option down in the settings to uh, disable this. This is the optimized strand geometry. The apply amount slider is very handy to be able to control the overall effect for this particular operator. You can add additional operators such as frizz and have the same kind of control you would expect as you would if you added the hair from any other method. The frizz gives it a nice bit of volume. However, there are other options within the operator with the hair from mesh strips to give the hair volume as well. To add volume, we go into the settings where we can see the volume, and by increasing the volume, it's going to add just that across the whole entire length of the mesh strip. However, we have actually got this volume ramp, so I can adjust the curve as to where down the whole entire length from root to tip that the volume is going to be applied. So, in this particular case, I'm choosing to have the roots to have more volume and have no volume right at the tips. Or very little. After doing this I'm going to re-enable the frizz again so that we can see what it looks like with a combination of both the volume and having the frizz simultaneously. Adding both a change width and mesh from strips modifier will enable me to see the geometry or a geometry version of the hair in the viewport. The change width needs to go before the mesh from strips modifier in order for the mesh from strips modifier to use the change width settings. add more hair I simply go to the hairs per strip and increase the number. Continuing to make any further adjustments will enable you to get the hair and the volume just as you want it to be. Bearing in mind that we've only used three strips in this particular case. Now there may be a time where you wish to start off with the hairs from mesh strips but then convert that to the normal way of editing the hair i.e. to actually go back to guides again and then continue with the styling from the guides point of view rather than directly on the hair. So in the next section of this video I'm going to show you just how to do that. So this scene should really give things a clear perspective of how you can get from initially creating a hair from mesh strips and then convert that back to a guide based editing um, styling system. So the idea is here is that we've initially started to do our hair shaping from the hairs from mesh strips. I've kept it quite simple in this particular case. I've generated the hair from mesh strips from a simple plane. The next thing is, is to keep in mind that I want to convert the hair back to guides. So it's important that you don't have too many hairs per strip. So in my particular case, I've chosen to have eight hairs per strip. This is so that when it gets converted from hairs back to guides again, then I'm not going to have too many guides to control. Now the important factor in all of this 
is to be able to get the um, hair from guides to show the hairs and this won't work unless you've got this ground strands put in place this is because in order for the hair from guides to work it needs to have some grounded strands that is rooted to some geometry so this is what this operator does if I select this operator you can see here that in here I've actually got the distribution mesh as the plane so this is the object which I originally used to create or generate the hair from mesh strips from once I click on the attach roots then it becomes rooted in a mesh based um, strands system then from that point onwards I'm able to go and add the hair from guides and then the hair will show I've also added a edit guides in here so that I'm able to continue as I normally would to style the um, guides so as an example here you can see here that I'm actually able to style the hair exactly as I normally would for grooming even though the hair is generated originally from the hair from mesh strips so just to summarize here we started off with a hair from mesh strips we then grounded these strands to geometry we then add a edit guides because now we've got guides and then we can add the hair from guides after this you can add as many operators as you need such as frizz clump etc to control your final hairstyle in this particular example I went a step further and in the edit guides I added strand groups and even channels so that I've got even more control over how the frizz in this particular case is applied to the hair now I'm going to be going through what the channels are and the groups in another video but this video really is just to show you how you can actually get from initializing with a hair from strips and then bring it back to a guide based hairstyling system